all right, we're going to be rewriting Tekken 3. So not everything is going to be canon, just like in Bloodline. So anyhow, we're 18 years into the future. Hihachi has been training his son harshly. His grandson, I'm sorry, harshly. To be a strong young man. After his mother died. And we start off with a whole new generation. Hihachi's now 73. And still strong somehow. There it goes Ogre. The mean streets of Punk Alley, New York. So we got Paul. Instead of martial law, we got his son, Forest Law. Uh, we got King, the new King, training. You got Lang Xiaoyu, who fought off Hiachi's guards to prove herself. Because she wants an amusement park. We got Nina and Cryo Sleep coming out of it. Losing her memory in the process. We got Lei Wu Long, famous detective now. Yoshi's famous costume. Lei about to get his ass blown up. <laughs> Eddie Guerrero. Wong, Beck's pupil. Eddie Master and Caporal in the main, mean streets of Brazil. And we got Jen. Very good intro. So where, where should we start? Okay, we'll start with the first match. Hoang versus Brian. Brian was sent by Dr. I, Dr. Abel, 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 to go after Yoshimitsu, which is Dr. Boskanovich. His creation, and we got Hoang, who shares a rivalry with Jen around the block. They had a draw. He's in. Jen has been the only guy that Hoang could not beat. They had a draw in their first fight back in the day, which I don't understand the fuck how because Jen is from Japan and Hoang is from Korea, but whatever. This is fucking video game logic. Don't don't put too much thought into it. I'm sure fucking head will explode. So anyhow, first match. Brian does well, but and this was a good match. Brian was strong when he debuted. Strong. This this was a very close fight. Brian goes for his meteor. Meteor smash misses. Hoang hits his finisher, the power blast. His power magnetic blast. And um, Brian's out of the tournament in the first match. Strong in second three, still looks weak. Um, yada, 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 yada. He's a cyborg, so he can, have, he can be the average human. So, somehow he can take uh, tanks ex exploding bombs into his body and plenty of machine gunshots but he couldn't be he can't win a tournament hmm maybe but then again maybe with all those gunshots and, and bullets he was, he's been taking maybe that's why he was starting to die uh, whatever so now Jane is now in that doubt she's an engineer who worked on Gun Jack. She helped produce Gun Jack. And Gun Jack, uh, while he did not win the tournament, he is still well equipped to protect Jane. And Dr. Abel is up to his no good tricks again. Tries to destroy Gun Jack like he destroyed Jack to his predecessor. And and this is the real ending, by the way. Some of y'all probably have never never seen the actual real ending, to where Gunjack is has a shield to protect himself. And because of the the shield that Gunjack has been equipped with, Doctor Abel did not have the same luck that he had with in destroying Jack too. So Gunjack is prepared for the blast. 
to protect Jane as well. But later, if you read Wiki, the Tekken Force went after Gunjack and eventually took him out. So, another one down. Next, we got Shaoyu versus Yoshimitsu. And this was, I hate to say it, uh, but I know there's a lot of Yoshimitsu fans, but Yoshimitsu was low tier back in the day. He was always in the back of the book back in the day, so he wasn't treated with a lot of importance. This was a squash match. Shao Yu squashed Yoshi. This was easy. But look at how I'm putting the moves together. How I'm making Shao Yu look like how the computer fights with her. I'm doing all her tricky moves. Because this is how I'm putting the moves together. I'm studying what the computer likes to do a lot. But I fight against them. And that's how kind of how I put the moves together. To make the matches look real. What you guys... What, I mean, I'm choreographing these matches with two controllers, folks. What do y'all think I'm doing? Playing the arcade mode? Noobing out? <laughs> Sorry, guys. I'm more talented than that. For fuck's sake. So, anyhow. Anyhow, after Ling Chao, you beat some. Yoshimitsu went to draw some of Ogre's blood. Of course, Yoshimitsu cannot beat Ogre, but I guess he was able to get a sword, little little sword stab at him to try to save his very old and sick Dr. Boskanovich, who's now 88 years old. But the Ogre's blood is not very good because it made the rat dangerous. So, uh, I guess Yoshimitsu going to find a new medicine, some new treatment because uh, this ain't it. You want to end up some demon like this rat, uh huh. So I guess I guess Yoshi did find a treatment eventually because after the ogre's blood didn't work out because I mean I never heard about Doctor Boskanovich dying after this so. Uh. All right, we got Nina versus King next. This probably easily the best match in this tournament. I mean, both of these characters have chain throws, but unfortunately, Nina, as good as this match was, I mean, both of these guys got chain throws. You know, chain grapple galore. So this this match had everything. Both of these guys pull out all the stops, but it was because both of these are low tier rank. Their rankings are close, so that means I'm going to make the match close. And here we go. This is supposed to be King's Rage Drive that I gave him. He does some multi throws. I mean, very good match. I mean, from start to finish. But Nina's low tier. She lost her memory. She's just not as strong as she used to be. And the new King beats her. Very good match, but uh, Nina didn't do well in this tournament like she's done in previous tournaments. She's just not as good, and that's why she did a lot of cheap shots. As you notice, she's blowing gas. She's blowing some kind of mist at at King. She's low. She's going for low blows. Her bad habit forward, forward three. So anyhow, she loses. And I think Jen tries to help her, as well as her sister Anna, tries to help her find something to regain her memories. But the doctor's like, no, there's nothing for you. So Anna does actually kind of help her by sending her to the cemetery that we saw in the previous tournament after Nina lost. Uh, her memory, she started to get her memory back. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Yeah, that's, that's right. I don't like you. Aren't we enemies? Yeah, so Anna smiles here at the end after getting slapped. And she didn't smile necessarily because of Nina slapping her. It's not that she thought it was funny. It was just that, oh, so she's getting her memory back. So like I said, like I said before, this is one of those times where you see that Anna kind of does care about her older sister. 
Because why is Anna trying to help her? Or maybe Anna's trying to help Nina get her memory back from cryo sleep so they can continue their rivalry. Because Anna wants to beat her fair and square. Because Anna did not actually participate in the third tournament originally. You know, she, Anna, Anna actually did not fight in this tournament. Um, this is she did she did not participate. She's pretty much a DLC character in this game. She was just there at that moment to help Nina for a mysterious reason. All right, next we got Forest Law versus Kuma. And this is not the same Kuma that you saw in the first two tournaments. That that old bear died of old age. So this is a new bear. And it's Kuma's very this bear is very green. So right now it's not as powerful, it's not as strong as the old Kuma. And we got Forest Law. Forest Law was not even supposed to be in this tournament, really. Forest Law Paul snuck him into this tournament. Because Paul's like, I guess you can fight. You know, you can do it, I guess. And Martial Law was not happy about this at all. Like, Martial Law didn't talk to Paul for over a year because of this shit. He didn't, he didn't want his son fighting outside the dojo. Because Martial Law knows how dangerous these King of Iron Fist tournaments are. He don't want his son to have anything to do with this shit. But... Forest Law can actually whip ass, as you can see here. This was a squash. Forest Law completely just squashed Kuma. So, Martial Law pulls his son out of the tournament. So, Forest Law cannot continue. Daddy wasn't having that, so he's back in his dojo training. In his father's dojo training. And age has caught up with his father and Paul Phoenix. Yeah, it happens to us to us all. So in Kuma, well, eh, this is Mishima Polytech High School, Shao Yuzu for a pet panda, and uh, Kuma has a crush on Panda. Bear likes another bear. I mean, it's a goofy storyline, but hey, I do like this ending nonetheless because you get to see Machine Politech High School. So, and it's a beautiful view. Julia, this is probably not even canon, but I want to show this because one thing I love about Tekken 3 is how they show the old characters from the previous tournament. So, Julia's trying to save her. Mother, he, uh, Michelle. Julia is, is, is Julia was adopted by Michelle, basically. And Michelle is trying to teach her adopted Julia not to, not to fight for revenge. Let the, you know, let go and let God or whatever. Michelle, because Michelle knows how dangerous the Mishima family is. You know, Ms. Julia didn't do well in this tournament. She was low tier back in the day. But um, after this, she's going to be a total fucking beast. And probably the most controversial match that I've done on this entire channel. Out of all four playlists so far, Paul vs. Hoang. Paul, you you know the whole nonsense. Paul dominated the third, third term, tournament and even triumphed over Ogre. And he thought he beat Ogre. Bullshit. Paul's 46 years old now. He's not in the front of the booklet anymore. Now he's in the middle. He's a mid-carder. Fuck that shit. How did he make it that far without running into Jen and beating Jen? That was total bullshit. I'm glad they changed that in Bloodline. Make him lose a tournament. That's total bullshit. And I, and fuck anybody who thinks that makes sense. Like I said, I know somebody gonna hate me for this shit, but 
whatever, fuck you. Hoang wins. Hoang advances in the tournament, and we're now we're at the midpoint of the tournament. You know, Paul ain't the toughest in the universe. Fuck you. He's 46. He ain't gonna be no young, strong Hoang. Save Hoang for Jen. Fuck you, Paul. And I show off the EMBU to let you know this. This is the halfway point of the tournament. Yada yada yada. Let's move on. So after Eddie loses the tournament, and he did pretty well, he goes to visit these drug lords to find out. And this is probably the best ending ever. Not just in second three, but ever. I mean, this ending was like. This belongs in like a black, uh, uh, a top tier black movie, like Bad Boys 2 or some shit. So, Eddie's trying to find out who killed his father or whatever. And he finds out he beats, he beats up one of the drug lords into giving up, them giving up information that Eddie wants. And so Eddie finds out that it was Kazuya who set his father up to be, his rich father up to be murdered. Uh, as you can see. Um, but Kazuya is presumably dead. Well, actually, Kazuya is not dead. G Corp, G Corp brought him back to life somehow. You know, I guess they, I don't know how the fuck you're going to pull somebody out of a volcano without killing yourself. But like I said, video game logic, don't make, don't think too hard because video game logic doesn't make a whole lot of sense. They just, you know, they need some excuse for this man to be, to bring him back to life. So, um, anyhow, yeah. Kazuya was still doing shit while he was assumed to be dead all right we got king versus jen this was pretty much a squash now this uh happened in sweat in second bloodline so this match deserves a w just for that because guess what folks home attack did it first Home Attack put King versus Jen first in second three, and Jen beat him. But it was pretty much a squash. King ain't, King ain't ready for that smoke. King ain't ready for that Mishima smoke. But let's look at some of this choreography. How, how I make Jen look badass. So I do his 2 4 throw, jumps back, high corpse, 10 hit combo. Kang is going to do some moves. Yada, yada, yada. So far, Kang does okay. Misses a move, and I make Jen do this. He does his little key charge before lightning screw uppercut to make him look badass. Every move means something when I do these matches to make the character look like how they're supposed to look to make them look strong or to make them resemble the character itself instead of just doing random moves so armor king is training this new king sometime after the tournament and i guess armor king is thumbs i guess he's not impressed with this new king where he has has doubts because he likes the old king better he misses him i don't know but King wins the championship, but in Norman King's out there, he goes back to check on Norman King, and even Wiki doesn't really explain or know what's going on here. Is Norman King having heart problems right now, or is he just like sad about having memories of the old King dying? You know, his friendship with the old original King. Uh, that, that remains to be a mystery still to this day. You know. It could be either or. Maybe it's both. I don't know. But anyhow. 
And uh, you got Mokujin here who lost the tournament, of course. And um, Mokujin sprang to life when Ogre was awakened. So he, because you know, Hihachi's using this tournament to draw out Ogre to make Ogre fight. So, you know, basically this tournament is to draw out Ogre. And Hihachi wants to know about this mysterious ogre being who's been destroying fighters around the world. So that's why Mokujin's here. Who cares? Shayu versus Jin. This is near the end of the tournament. And both of these two are top tier. Of course, Jin won the tournament. But Shayu, just like in Tekken Bloodline, is very strong in second three. Shayu was a boss in her debut back in second three she was a boss she got this far this is like one of the late stages of the tournament the tournament is almost over now at this point and shayu's still fighting she's still hanging in there yeah she lost to jen don't you know jen beat her but shy but he actually told her if you do well you'll get the amusement park yeah jen beats her so she gets the part and I guess this is, I guess, sort of canon, or maybe this, uh, maybe this is not canon. Maybe it's just to show he, to kind of, this is kind of like a warning. It's not canon, but it's a warning to Shao about Shao Yu and why she should not trust Hihachi because she didn't know about Hihachi. You know, she was completely um, oblivious to who this man really was. You know, she thought this was the man to be honored, and this is, this video is just an animated, and if she found out about Hiachi, this is what she would do to him, basically. So now we're at stage eight. Near the end of the tournament, and let's talk about this draw for a second, because this is canon. <coughs> I tried to make this as canon as possible, so to make this a draw, even though the match is supposed to go to Jen. So, what happened is Jen knocks Hwang out. Hwang beats the continue count, gets back up, and after Hwang gets back up, neither of these guys could hit each other anymore. So, I had to make it a draw. But because Jen knocked Hwang the fuck out for a second still, the match still goes to Jen. Now, what happened is, Hwang tried to go to his master Beck to tell him about this amazing fight he had with Jen, this draw, this match he had with Jen. He was probably, he probably wanted to lie to his master and tell his master, yeah, yeah, I beat Jen because I'm a, I beat a Mishima. But, you know, when in reality, it was a, I can't even call it a draw, Gen 1, let's be honest. And, but, Hoang finds Master Beck knocked unconscious. He wanted to tell him about this amazing fight he had with Jen, but Ogre attacked Beck, you know, before Hoang could tell him about this fight that he had with Gene Kazuma. So... And this also means that if we're going by canon, Beck was the last fighter to be attacked by Ogre. And, you know, mind you, Beck, he didn't kill Beck. Beck is, was just knocked into a coma for over a year. But Beck was the last to be attacked by Ogre well into his 40s. By now, Beck is, what, 46 years old? During the events of Tekken 3? So, yeah, that's what happens. Uh, this Around this time, Beck was attacked by Ogre. And because uh, Hwang did score... I'm sorry, because Jen did score a knockout, this match goes to Jen. Also, I want to talk about this arcade opening because they're showing you June and Kazuya. Like maybe they were supposed to be in a game or something. 
I don't know. I uh, I just find that interesting. And was that June's head or or who who knows? So now we're at the finale. Jen makes it to fight the sponsor of the tournament, Hihachi Mishima. And this was Hihachi's plan to draw out Ogre. And Jen has hope oh, I'm sorry. Hihachi has trained his grandson well, so Jen is ready. And boy, I mean, he ought to be if you're going to fight Hihachi. Hihachi, even at 73 years old, Hihachi is, yeah, he, the guy's a demon. I mean, he, the guy's a monster, even at 73 years old. So, um, but still, guess what? Jen beats him. Jen has defeated his grandfather. And now he can draw out Ogre. The greatest ending ever. Ogre, Cody got him. There you go. Bam. Jen has defeated Ogre. Both forms, by the way. And Ogre casts cast off. He dies off. And look what his grandfather does. Turns on Jen after he thought his grandson is no longer needed. Okay, Ogre's done, so now I'm finished with you. I don't need you. For, oh, you forgot about that double gene, didn't you? Like father, like son. And how could he, how she, how could anybody survive being thrown through bricks like that? So. Now, like in Tekken Bloodline, he flies off to the moon. Because the moon has some kind of connection to the devil or the Illuminati, whatever. Uh, I'm not going to go into an Alex Jones conspiracy theory about in, in this uh, video. Let's just uh, get back to the point. So... In Bloodline, they try to make it more dramatized to where the other fighters were trying to tell Jen, like, to, to calm down. Don't let the double take over you. Don't to control yourself. I think Jen was already originally learning to control himself after he realized he was probably going too far. So, after throwing Kihachi through the wall, and he probably knew his mother wouldn't want him to do that. So... I guess he flew away and calmed himself down. Probably he never probably even took the, the the prize money that he won for winning the tournament. I mean, his fucking grandfather shot him in the back of the head after winning the tournament. I mean, that shows you how evil Hihachi is. Like he used his grandson just to draw out Ogre, so he could so so he could see Ogre fight. Like, this entire tournament was all about drawing out Ogre. So, and also I wanted to quickly talk about the fact that after, after Jen throws a bunch of people to the wall and then throws his grandfather through the wall, you notice in second tag, it makes me wonder if Tekken Tag was supposed to be originally canon. Let alone the fact that it originally was probably supposed to be on PS1. But, which I would have fucking loved that because the arcade version of Tekken Tag just seems more fun than the console version, but I digress. But you notice that the walls are knocked down on Tekken Tag on Hihachi stage. In Tekken 3, the walls are still up, up until this ending happens. But then in Tekken Tag... The walls are knocked down at this stage. This is the Mexican temple. Hihachi stage and Ogre stage is the same. It's the same building. So, but you notice on Hihachi's, Hihachi stage, and you can really see it in the arcade version of, uh, of Tekken Tag 1. 
where the walls are all knocked down is is almost as if maybe Tekken Tag One was originally supposed to be an, an actually actually canon when you think about it. Because why did they knock the walls down? Why couldn't they just keep the walls up? Well, you know, on Hiachi stage in Tekken Tag One, like in Tekken Three. Hmm. Just. Just a theory, once again, look, this is not InfoWars, I'm not Alex Jones, I'm just making a point. And soon I'm going to start my Tech and 4 playlist, and those matches are going to look real as hell. So please like, share, and subscribe, because you're going to like what I got next. I'm going to start playing the newer games now. And uh, that's the video.